What's up guys, back again with another video and here's like a really requested one and that's um, kind of some tips on how to shoot automotive rollers. So basically you've seen people probably hang outside of cars um, and get really low to shoot that killer rolling shot. I'm going to give you some tips and some tricks to make that a little bit easier and get your photo that much better. So here we go. So first thing is uh, what lens you're gonna be shooting on. I personally like to shoot them on a 16 to 35. Sometimes you can get away with like a 24 to 70. It kind of depends on how much depth you want, how big your highway is, how much room you're gonna have to shoot. I like to get nice and wide sometimes and it just depends on the shot that I'm looking for. The next thing is the settings. So I get a lot of questions on this and basically what I do is I keep my ISO at auto, um, especially if it's like partially cloudy, partially sunny because I don't know where it's going to be at on the highway and sometimes it makes it tough to change that on the fly some cameras make it easier than others but typically that's what i leave on auto it's the only thing i leave on auto um, for shutter speed typically what i do is i'll originally set it to 1 over 60 because uh, if i'm on a highway i'll probably be doing about 50 miles an hour sometimes i'll even go a little bit slower like a 1 over 40. so it kind of depends on how fast i'm going um, the slower we're going, kind of the slower I'll make the shutter speed. And now when it comes to aperture or like the f-stop, I'll typically put that around uh, f5.6 because I like that detail and I want to be able to get the whole uh, image of the car in detail. Because if I found if I go to like f2.8, sometimes I'll maybe get only the front of the car sharp and then it blurs the back. Um, makes it a little tough and tricky. So those are usually what the settings that I found to be easiest when come shooting automotive rollers. The best way to do it, honestly, is you have a driver for you. I don't ever recommend driving and taking rollers. Some people do it. They'll brag about it. I personally don't like to do it. Um, I love my cars too much to even risk crashing them. So I'd rather have somebody drive me. And then that way I could also hang out the window, you know, have a seatbelt, um, you know, in Mexico. Um, hang out a little bit out the window. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll have a wrist strap or not a wrist strap, but like a neck strap on the camera, wrap that around my wrist. Uh, and then that way you can get low and you're not afraid of totally dropping your camera and losing it. Cause you know, thousands of dollars of equipment you don't want to lose. And so those are just some tips and tricks to hopefully make your rollers that much better. You know, I'll kind of show you a couple examples of rollers that I've taken in the past. And um, yeah, let me know what you guys think or any other questions you may have. Um, I know these are a big thing for people to want to be able to do. My camera on the 1DX here does not have like a little rotating screen. That does make it easier. I've shot on like my EOS R. It makes life that much easier when you have a little flip screen. Um, but yeah, so when it comes to automotive rollers is what they're called or like rollers or rolling photos, however you want to call it. Those are usually the tips and tricks that I use and the settings that I personally use um, to get a dope shot.